overcoming the spirit of familiarity. I will show you how good familiarity can be and how dangerous familiarity can be. Let me give you a quick definition of familiarity or familiarity itself. Uh, what it simply means is uh, being well known or knowing something too well. How many of you drive, you're driving, you come from work, you, drive, you don't even know how you pass through a set of lights? And then when you get home, you're like, did I just pass there? You know your ways and your ways. You don't even think about what is going on because you can just cruise like that. That is what? That is familiarity. It's a good familiarity. You know where you're going. You know what, what, what is happening. You know your environment. So familiarity is uh, being well known or recognizability based on uh, long or close association. Remember, I'm dealing with the two topics in one. There is a good familiarity and the danger to familiarity. Let me take you to a scripture real quick in Mark chapter 6 verse 2 to 4. It says that when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. They begin right there. But that is not a good amazement. They are amazed because they want to compare now, where is this man coming from? And the scripture continues, it says, where did this man get these things? They asked, what is this wisdom, and has, what is this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? But look at three. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son? And the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. Her and his sister here with us. And the Bible says after that, and they took offense. They began counting. You doing miracles, but you are just a son of a carpenter. We know your sisters, we know your brother. What can you tell us? I want to show you the dangers of familiarity. Mark chapter 6 verse 5 to 6. It says, uh, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of what? What brought lack of faith? Familiarity. They were too familiar with him. Who are you? You were just a carpenter. So the dangers of familiarity is that we become people of unbelief. We come into the service, we forget to believe that God can change a life. Familiarity breeds what? Unbelief. So unbelief, because of unbelief, Jesus could not do miracles. And then here's the second one, the dangers of uh, being too familiar with God. Offense, Mark 6.3. They began to say, isn't this the carpenter? What is that translates? Isn't this been going on for a long time in my life? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Isn't this what goes on in our family? We always end up here. We, it's like a generational curse. And then it goes here. Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took what? Offense. When you are too familiar with God, you can easily be offended. Somebody comes, okay, for example, somebody comes and says, uh, you know, the Lord gave me a word about you that, uh, you know, there are some things that you need to change. And you've been in church for 20 years. Don't you think that I know how God moves? Don't you think that I pray in my closet? Yeah, you pray in your closet, but God has been finding it difficult to get to your closet. That's why now he's using somebody to come in to tell you. You see, sometimes we may do something so spiritual, not knowing that the same spiritual thing we're doing is blinding us from what God wants to do in this season. That's why Jesus had to tell Peter, get behind me, Satan. Peter wasn't a Satan at all. But Peter had allowed the circumstances of what he heard to be led by the spirit of the enemy to say, no, 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 no. You're not going to go and die. 
What am I saying here? God wants to do something new and he wants to open up our hearts to say, listen, it doesn't matter what you learned in Bible college. Can I do something new? In fact, the more I study the Bible, the more I want to go and enroll in another school again because I find out I know nothing. <laughs> Zero. Familiarity with God can make you compare the move of last century to the move of today. God is not in the hold century. God is a God of now, today. Today, the dangers of familiarity. Familiarity with God or with each other actually breeds contempt. Familiarity is dangerous because the better you know someone, the more you will find fault with them. Now listen to what happens now. When we come into the service like this, we are too familiar with each other. We're too familiar with the words of each other. By the time we're trying to cry out to God, our familiarity with each other has already hindered what God can do in a service. I know this is tough. But I just want you to know, if we're crying for God to move, he has to start with us. Familiarity is dangerous because the more time you spend with someone, the more you, you lose respect for them. Have you noticed that? We've been hanging out with bullies, with bullies, with bullies, with bullies. Now I don't even see you, you know. I may be your pastor now. You're like, hey, amen, hey, amen, hey. Because the more you lose that respect, and I'm not just saying respect for a pastor here. I'm saying respect for each other. If I was to value you the way God values you, to an extent that he had to send Jesus Christ to go and die on the cross of Calvary just for you. Uh, if I valued you that way, that you are the redeemed of God, you are the, the one that God has redeemed you, and we come into the house of the Lord, guess what? We're looking at each other. I know you got my, your problems. I know I've got my problems, but what are we going to do here? Let's push to heaven together for God to show Show up and change our lives so that we can be a life changer and life giver. I say this, you can't take people where you've never been yourself before. This is why this message is important. Not being too familiar with each other. Valuing each other. I'll use this example. They are your friends and, you know, the first time you started becoming friends, for example, you went into the, you know, they invited you to their house. They cleaned everything and everything was so clean. Have you been, I got visitors coming, kids, shh, kids in your basement, they, they, these are important visitors, they, they're coming right now, and I want you to be here, I want you to be angels. And then after you become too familiar, guess what? It doesn't matter, dishes all over, everything all over. It doesn't, I mean, we even too familiar with our own cars. When you buy a car, what do you do? Every, you sleep, you wake up in the window, you want to see what's happening in there. You can't leave even a coffee cup there. Why? Because it's not too familiar with you. This is treated nicely. And then after some times, ah, who cares? Psh, splash, splash, splash. The same attitude is the attitude we have with God. God becomes so important. We come here with a revelential fear. We have the revelential attitude towards God. Oh, I am here is for God. I just want to worship. I just want to feel the presence of God. And then a few times after you come in here, you don't care. If you felt God or God spoke to you, you don't care. You just register time into church and you go home. And we are crying for a move of God. Not only does God want us to restore our relationships, he wants us first to avoid the spirit of familiarity with him. In Numbers chapter 20, verse 9 to 12. Then Moses and Aaron gathered their assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. That's the voice of a man who is upset. That's the voice of a man who is angry. But listen to what happens here. And then he says this, Shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice, not once, twice. 
But God did not tell him in this particular incident to struck the rock. He told him to speak to the rock. But how many know when you are full of bitterness and anger, you can't speak very well? Some of you even stammer when, when the fire is on. When the fire is on, I'm just going to get you. Because it's coming, it's the passion and everything in there. One of the greatest things that is going to stop the move of God is actually offense and bitterness in the hearts of people. Because when we are too familiar with each other, we will be easily offended by each other. And when we are offended by each other, guess what? There is no way the power of God can move in a place where there is no honor. A place where there is no honor for God, honor for each other, there is no way God can move. We can be here and have church. According to the history of the, our charismatic, we are church. I'm asking, did we have church? Did God come in our midst? That's the church we are looking for. God, can God come and show up in our midst? But probably he's afraid because we are full of bitterness and anger and forgiveness in our hearts. Moses, he couldn't speak. And look what God says to Moses here real quick. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. The question is, what disqualified Moses from leading the people into the promised land? Two things. Moses became too familiar with God. And that is what God says. Actually, other scripture says, uh, because you, you, you treated me with contempt, what Moses had done, he had taken up offense. The people had irritated him. In this season, if you take up the offense of those who are offended because they are offended, you are offended, you are going to miss what God wants to do. We need to realize we need God in this season to be near our hearts and our spirit. That God, I don't want to be too familiar how you work and how you operate. I want to know you in such a way that everything is new. Do you know when you have everything brand new? It smells good. It looks good. You always want to run back to it. But some of us, we've made God to become so old. And the reason is, some preachers came and preached to us. Are you served? You're going to hell. And they said, no, 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 no. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. And they said, okay, here's a ticket. You got the ticket to go to heaven, but you don't know what to do while you are waiting to go to heaven. We become too familiar with God. We treat Him with contempt. Our commitment level becomes so low. I will go when I want to go. I will show up when I want to show up. It doesn't matter what the people say. By the way, I'm just a volunteer here. They don't pay me. One day we were invited to go and preach in a place with my wife and the kids. And we didn't know that was just a, a church plant. We get there there was only the, the church planter, their daughter, and my kids. And I went into a crisis. I'm telling you the truth. Where are the people, Lord? And then the Lord said this. If you are able to honor me with a few, I will trust you with many across the nations because I know your attitude is not in the numbers. Your attitude is in the souls that are present. That changed how I approached ministry. As long as there is one more person 
As long as there is two people there, I'm going to go and preach as if there is a thousand. Why? Because I refuse to be too familiar with God. You know, we can come in the house of the Lord for a long time like this. We are too familiar with each other. We are too familiar with the history. We're too familiar with all the struggle and everything. And we allow the enemy to blind us from what God wants to do in this season. A new season where God wants to do something very special. But our past is holding us. Past mistakes. Past bitterness. Past whatever. Past favorite. And the Lord is saying, I'm doing something. I'm not a God who goes into the past. I'm a God who uses the past to bring about the new. And I'm about to do something new. But will you accommodate me to, re to, to release that thing that is new into our lives? Or are we going to say, that's not how it was done. That's not how it should be done. I love, I deal with lots of churches. Some of them, it's the worship team. Members, maybe they came from somewhere and they said, that's not the songs we used to sing there. You are there. This is here. It doesn't matter what you sang there. If it was a cappella, praise God for a cappella. Here we beat the drums. What I'm saying is when you are too familiar, when you are too familiar with the environment, it bleeds contempt. Maybe you travel like me. You go to some places and then you look like, this is not how we do in Canada. Yeah, you are not in Canada. Embrace the people and the culture there and all shall go well. I don't want to go to the story in the book of Leviticus. I believe it's chapter 10 of Aaron's children. A bill. Let me just read. Let's stand and uh, we're going to pray together. Let me just read this and we're going to pray together. Yes, it's uh, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. It says that uh, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abil, put coals of fire in their incense banners and sprinkled incense over them. In this way, they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. Familiarity brings disobedience. Aaron's children, they were familiar with the temple. And they saw what their dad did. And they thought, I can do it at any time. And guess what they did? They went and started burning the fire. God called that fire a strange fire. Why? They had become too familiar with God and they thought they could do what Aaron can do. We need to understand as people of God that we can never know where God too well more than that we can't take correction when God is speaking. I don't dismiss any person that comes to me to say, the Lord said, uh, I should give you this word. It doesn't matter what you've seen God do in your life. It doesn't matter what you've seen God move in your life. God is saying, I'm about to do a new move today. I'm about to show you something new today. I want to do something that is so special in your life. Are you willing to say, God, I'm laying down all that I know for all that you can provide, that I can be a vessel that ushers in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that changes lives. Father, I don't want my knowledge to be a stumbling block into what you want to do. Is that your prayer today? That's my prayer. That's my desire. That God, it doesn't matter how many miracles I have seen. Humility is key to advancing the kingdom of God. Humility is powerful. Because when we tell God we know too well, then God will say, go solve your own problems. 
as God was talking to Ezekiel, Ezekiel saw some dry bones. God actually told him, Ezekiel, what do you see? Ezekiel says, I see dry bones. And then the Lord says, you see correctly. But I'm going to ask you a question, Ezekiel. Can these dry bones live once again? Ezekiel was smart enough to say, Lord, only you know. He did not say, I have seen the God of my forefathers who can bring these bones to live, to life. Ezekiel says, only you, God, knows you can change the situation. Only you, God, knows because you operate at your own time. Only you, God, knows because you operate according to your word. Only you, God, knows because you operate according to the season. And Father, I am saying yes. Only you knows these dry bones can live once again. And then the Lord at that time was able now to entrust the power of words into the mouth of Ezekiel. And he told Ezekiel, now speak to these dry bones today. It is at that time, Ezekiel, first of all, he wasn't too familiar with God or too familiar with the situation to say, who have ever seen a bone with no flesh start coming back together? If it is you and me, we see such a dry season in a person's life. We will say, man, I'll believe for you, but I don't know about this one. I think this one would be weird. I don't know if this one can change. May I encourage you not to get tired of the situation you are going through, such that you become too familiar that God cannot help you. It could be an addiction. It doesn't matter how long you fought with this. Continue fighting it because at an appointed time, God will reveal himself strong. Don't get tired of what you are battling with. Don't get tired because it has taken too long maybe for you to change certain things. Continue to chip at it. Continue to work on it. Continue to ask God, change me, mold me, transform me, transform my life. And you're going to see what God is going to be able to do. May we not be too familiar with God. May we have revelential fear of God. Where is the fear for God? Where is the fear? We talk about the love of God. A lot of people love God, but very few have the revelential fear for God. If I have revelation fear for God, there is no way I'm gossiping you. There's no way I'm speaking evil about you. Because I've got some revelation fear of God. Where is the fear for God in the church today? We say we love Him. But the Bible says, if you love me, then where is my honor? Where there is no fear. There is contempt of how we treat God and treat each other. May you not become so common to me such that I don't show the real love for you. May we not as believers not become so common to each other such that we don't see the value in each other. Just because somebody has a weakness, it doesn't mean you can't honor them. We love honoring people that hide, self-importance people. But God is saying, can you honor somebody even when you know their weakness? Can you respect your boss even, you, even if you know he's weird? Lift up the hand. Father, help me to walk in love, not just in speech. May you help me to walk in honor, humility, and to demonstrate your character into this world. In Jesus' name.